This is the bench top setup for plotting a body diagram of a switch mode power supply so that power electronics engineers can then use the results to analyze the stability of the control loop they design for the switch mode power supply. In today's video, we're going to cover how to set this up and how to use a equipment to plot the body diagram. We're not going to cover what are body diagrams, control loops, power electronic series, anything like that. Because those are not within the scope of this video. For more information, please refer to other useful resources that you can find online or books. So let's begin. First, let's have a look at the general overview of the setup. You will definitely need a board you design, a switch mode power supply in this case, a power supply to power it up, and possibly an electronics load to take the load. And that is the circuit setup. In terms of the equipment, you can use a functional generator plus a oscilloscope with some special software, or purchase a specific equipment to do the job. In this case, we are using TechBox TBVNA6000. It is a VNA, but has the body diagram feature. Apart from the equipment itself, you also need a injection transformer, two high impedance passive probes, and that's it. As you can see, the injection transformer takes a changing frequency, variable frequency signal from the output of the equipment and then inject that signal into the break link of the switch mode power supply control loop. Then the passive probes measure two points, right? Two probes measuring two points on the circuit and then feed that information to the um, equipment. And behind the equipment, there will be software to sampling the data and put everything together and plot you the body diagram, which is showing there. And you can see that we have both the gain and the phase. And with that information, you can then work out the gain margin and phase margin of the circuit you design. So let's go to the details. This angle perhaps offers a better view of the detailed setup. This is the evaluation board we use. We use this evaluation board because it already provides me the loop one and loop two test point of the control loop. You probably can see that between loop one and loop two test point, there is a small resistor. And this resistor currently is 50 ohm. Normally you would use a 50 or 10 or 5 ohm resistor in this break link for the body uh, diagram. It's worth mentioning that the injection transformer we use also has a 5 ohm resistor there. So potentially you don't even need this 50 ohm in this link. But we, we just use this both in parallel. It doesn't really matter in this case. Now all you need to do is to connect the output of the injection transformer. In this case we have black and red wire to the correct test point. So in this case we're going to connect the black wire to test point 2 and red wire to test point one or loop one as, as you can see. We then connect the high impedance passive probe to the right connector as well. And in this case again, we connect port B to the red wire and port A to the black wire. There we are. The setup is complete. We can then move on to the equipment side and plot the body diagram. Since we are using TechBox TBVNA6000, by default it's a VNA, but it also has the body feature. So the first step is to enable the body feature. So we go to measurement and then select the body analyzer rather than the 50 ohm VNA. It will bring up this new window. This window gives you the frequency range of your body diagram. And in this case, because we want to have a comparison of our results compared with the EVM uh, manual results, so I just wanted to plot the same body diagram as what they did in the uh, evaluation board manual. So I'm going to plot between 100 Hz 
and 100 kilohertz. That means I need to change the frequency. So first I change this frequency to 100 hertz. Uh, I can of course do 100 to 100k, but in this case I just wanted to make a few more segments. So I will make 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz as my first uh, segment, between my first and second segment, and then the, the next one I'll make it 10 kilohertz. So I have a nice uh, segment selection to plot the body. The reason I create segments is because then I can define power level for each segment. And the rule often is that in the lower frequency range, you would probably want to go for higher power. So let's put 20 dBm in this uh, frequency range. Then I put 15 dBm in this frequency range. Then next I'll put 10 and then I'll put 5. So it's uh, slowly decreasing. Bandwidth wise, I think I'll just use 100 in all segments. Okay. And the reason that I use different power level is that if you increase the power level, then you can reduce the noise. However, if the power level is too high, you may experience non-linearities in your results. So it's always a uh, balance act. For now, I just use high power level in the lower frequency range and I slowly reduce the power level. The attenuation on port A and port B is the attenuation for the high impedance passive probe. You have the option choose of choosing 20 volts or 5 volts or 0.5 volts. I'll just leave it as 20 volts to start with. Next is to create the diagram. So I'll go to diagram then I have another window. Uh, first, I add a diagram. And then in this diagram, I can, of course, add trace. I can create two diagrams with two traces, or I can put two traces in one diagram. Since this is a body plot, I prefer to put both the gain and face in one diagram. In order to do that, I'll add traces. So I add first trace, which in this case, as I mentioned, should be channel B to channel A ratio, and what we are looking for is magnitude in dB, and I also want to show the units on the left hand side of the diagram. So everything is good, so I click CHB to CHA ratio, and then I add my first trace. As you can see here, my first trace is added. As mentioned, now I need to add another trace, so I add another trace, and in this case again, channel B to channel A ratio. However, in this case I need to uh, select the face, and I also want to put the units on the right-hand side of the diagram, so I do that. Then add, so you can see here I have my face value here, okay? So now if I enlarge this diagram, we have a good diagram set up here. Now we just need to change the um, the name. And on the left hand side, I know this is going to be my gain value. So I put gain and then put dB as the unit. And then on the right hand side, I double click. So both sides looking good. Now I need to define my uh, division of the, the vertical scale. So I much prefer 10 divisions. And on the top level, I would like to show 50, bottom level minus 50. So I have a really good uh, definition on my gain. And I'll do the same for my degree. So for my degree, I would like to see it perhaps between 200, to 200 degree to minus 200 degree. Okay, so that is done. Perfect. So next is to switch on the power of the setup and then click single. We should be able to plot uh, the body diagram. I just need to click single and they asked me whether I would like to go for it because it's going to take 12 seconds. This is because I plot. I wanted to plot 201 points. If you want to speed up, you you can put 51 points, for example. But in this case, I'm happy to wait. So, go for it. The blue trace is the plot of my game, and the red trace is the plot of my face. 
Now, in order to calculate the gain margin and phase margin, we just need to add markers. So go to marker, then add marker. So we have our first marker, right? And then we'll place this marker first on the um, gain plot where the gain crossed the zero. So I'm happy with 0 0.01 dB to be fair. So we leave it as it is. Now next is we're going to check the uh, phase value here. And basically this value will give me the margin, right? So in order to do that, uh, I need to do is to add another marker. But rather than add another marker, I'm going to add marker delta. So if I choose mal, uh, marker delta, it gives me another marker. And I'll place it on the phase curve, okay? I just need to move this uh, marker so that it gives me zero delta frequency. Okay, so that means this marker has exactly the same frequency point as this marker, and then the delta value, in this case 69.2 degree, is then my phase margin. Phase margin is 69.2 degree. Now I can use the same technique to find the gain margin. So let's just try it again. So first add marker. But in this case, I'm going to put this marker where the phase uh, value rose to minus 0 0.1 degree. I'm happy. Then I add another delta here. But in this case, I'll put this in the gain trace. Again, I need to make sure that the delta frequency is close to 0. 0 hertz, as you can see, and then the delta value here, which is minus 13 dB, is then my gain margin, okay? There is actually an easier way of uh, finding this. So, for example, I'll show you here. I can click here, then find a marker to X value, and then I can just put 0 and then this would make sure that my delta frequency is zero hertz, saving me time uh, moving this marker. So the gain margin of the control loop in this case is 13 dB, whereas the phase margin is 69 degree. Now I put this result compared with the results in the manufacturer data sheet. You can see they are very close. Um, I should mention that because, as I said, the control loop depends on the load condition and the setup, so there will be slight difference between my results against the evaluation board results. But the fact that the gain margin and the phase margin I measured is pretty close to what they got in the data sheet. I'm very happy with the setup I had.